So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's talk photography session. Hi, Hannah, how are you? Hello, good, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to have you with us. I know the last couple of days we've been chatting, so I've got to know you better as well and uh, an insight into your photography. And of course, you confused me slightly because I had read your article in the magazine, but we've got you in the magazine as Hannah Lamprell, which you've now explained to me is your married name, but your website's yeah. under Hannah Dougal, so you know the split personalities, these photographers, I don't Yeah, sorry about that one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have to bring it up, even though we've already chatted about it this morning. When I had your um, your biography photo sent over, and uh, I went, what an amazing room, and you disappointed me this morning because you said it wasn't yours. I was hoping this was a was a room in your house because it is phenomenal. Well, yeah, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> It's, I could have pretended, couldn't I? I, should have. I, I, I would have just said yes. I would have just said, yeah, of course, Jay, that's my study. Yeah, you know, I, know, I wouldn't have thought any different, but it's it's wonderful. One day. <laughs> Absolutely. Not while you've got the kids around, I expect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hannah, for those people that don't know you, because I've only got to know you through your cab relations with a magazine, um, tell us a little bit about you, how you got into the photography, and obviously the documentary style of photography and filmmaking, uh, filmmaker that you are. Okay, are you ready? I am ready. <laughs> so, I've always been really creative. I was big into painting for years and years and years. That's what I always used to do. Um, then we had a big family trip to Kenya. I think it was in 2010. And my dad got me my first ever DSLR camera. Um, obviously, I shot the entire holiday in auto because I had no idea about shooting in manual. Um, but that really got me hooked. Like, I was totally obsessed then. Um, then I continued to leave school, started my career as a veterinary nurse. I was doing emergency and critical care up in London. And then I met Kenny Hickey. He's a wedding photographer in Tunbridge Wells. And he took me on as a second shooter because all the while that I was working as a veterinary nurse, um, I was doing little 20 pound shoots in Denorland Park in Tunbridge Wells, if you know it. <laughs> um, all images included. I think I even used to say copyright included as well, because I literally had no idea. Um, so Kenny took me under his wing. It's awful, isn't it? It's so bad looking back. But I literally didn't have a clue. I must have been 21, 22. Um, so yeah, Kenny took me under his wing and he showed me everything. I was his second shooter at weddings eventually. Um, I did that for a couple of years um, and he literally taught me everything I know. Um, he taught me manual, he taught me lenses, he taught me light. Um, yeah, he really got me on the right track, so I'm so grateful to him, always will be. Um, and then I had my first child, I had Isabel, and everything changes, doesn't it, when you have children, like nothing can prepare you. My outlook on everything changed, and I couldn't really go back to doing um, the 16-hour night shifts up in London, travelling two hours to get there with a newborn even when she was one and I came off maternity leave, there was literally no way. So I dropped it all and I picked up the photography full time and I just had to push it and go with it and push it as hard as I could and learn everything I could as quickly as I could <laughs> and get going. So I continued my 20, I think I went up to 50 pound shoots into Norland Park <laughs> for a year. <laughs> and I shot so many families, literally at every kind of situation you could ever think of. So from a business point of view, it was diabolical, but from a learning and like, skills point of view it was amazing because I was shooting in midday sun with kids in fluorescent highlighter color t-shirts learning about skin tones through that like shooting in dark flats um I shot everywhere and I learned so much doing that that I'm grateful that I did do that um and then I did a workshop with Shijata from um, Black Natural Photography um because I really really I loved that like I used to go on all the um, Facebook groups with um, all the amazing professional photographers on there. And it was all those like dreamy, creamy backgrounds, um, really like painterly shoots. And I loved them. I was like, gosh, how do they do that? So I found Sujata's um, workshop she was doing. I think this was back in 2014. My daughter was only a newborn, so she was only tiny. And I went on one of Sujata's workshops. And again, that was a massive learning curve. Um, and I started shooting in that style, really, like I really liked the fine art kind of style. And all my early work is like that, really heavily edited, really painterly, beautiful, creamy backgrounds. Um, yeah, and I love that. But over time, um, seeing other more lifestyle documentary kind of star photographers, my style and my idea of what I love was changing um, slowly. Um, and I really struggled for a few years to try and like put the two together, but trying to create a gallery that I felt was good, 
um, with the amount of images that I had that I wanted to keep and trying to edit them all, it was taking hours and it was ridiculous. So I've slowly, slowly, slowly switched over to the documentary lifestyle kind of really basic edit, really just getting it right in camera first. That's the biggest thing. Um, and I've learned that slowly over the years. And now my style is what it is today. Um, it's a minimal edit at the end, but it's getting it right in camera first, which is really, really important to what I do. Um, so yeah, that's my story, really. That's how it's got to where we are today. So, mad. so now I do weddings and families and um, yeah, just in people's homes and outdoors, it's all really relaxed, really casual, really, yeah, just natural, as natural and relaxed as it can be. That's uh, brilliant. Because I, 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 my, my first question before we give you the presentation was that obviously just from me getting to know you and reading your recent article and then looking at the uh, the images that you sent over for us to promote the, the webinar with, there was obviously a heavy emphasis on on more the family lifestyle and documentary portraiture. So I know weddings have been quite impacted, obviously, because of the virus. Um, but I wanted to ask if there was a uh, was there a dominant site to, to your photography, you know, do you do, were you doing more weddings in your style or were you doing more family portraits or is it quite an equal mix? Um, I love family portraits. That's my, that's like my bread and butter. I really love doing them, but I also love weddings, but I can't take on that many. So I do 10 weddings a year, always have. Um, so I pick like the really boho in the garden DIY like really my style because my style is exactly the same in the wedding so it's all documentary lifestyle minimal posing minimal interruption just really dotting around the edges so I pick 10 weddings because I do get a lot of inquiries and um, so I pick all the ones in the gardens in the marquee out in like the mountains like all the amazing ones and I do 10 a year um, but my primary thing is the family photography because that is what makes my heart sing I love the family work and I think it makes you, you know, we're so familiar, even us as a portrait studio are, you know, we're, we're typically studio photographers, but we do do location photography. But I think over the last few years, I've definitely seen the rise of the documentary style of family photography. And personally, if I was having stuff done of my family, I would absolutely prefer the documentary style as I would for my wedding as well. Um, as, as a, yeah, mm -hmm. abso absolutely. That's that. And I think people know some people know this of me and me and you talking I think that's also my film background and that's why I, I, yeah. I favor those things as well brilliant Look, yeah. that's a fantastic insight we're going to talk about because you you mentor and you teach and on online as well yourself now and you've had a call yeah. for for that which is fantastic and I'm rightly so looking at your work so we'll talk more yeah. about that at the end and but again the easiest way to interact with Hannah is from her website, which is the lifenarrator.co.uk. And again, I will share the links with you and you can find her workshops and, and um, uh, her, her links to all of that from the website. So, but I'll make sure you've all got that. So Hannah, let's see the images and let's, you know, let's have you talk about them. So I'm gonna give you the screen. So that should be prompting you any second. So it should be coming over to you now and then I'll let you know once I can see it. Okay. Just wait for the um, little. Oh, there it is. There you so, go. Tell me when you can see me. Yeah, I can see it, and you've got it in full screen now. Excellent, and I can yeah. hear you loud and clear. So, what I'll do, Hannah, as we've discussed, is I'll go quiet. Guys, any questions you have, uh, guys and girls, I should say, any questions you have for Hannah, please pop them in the question panel. We've got loads of time at the end, but I'll interject where necessary. Hannah, if you need to talk to me at all, you just ask, and I'll. I'm here. I promise. It's all yours. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks everyone for tuning in and listening. This is very exciting and very terrifying all at the same time. I can't believe I'm doing it. Um, so this is my favorite image of 2020, I think. I did this, I think it was March, the beginning of 2020. Um, I didn't get to do many shoots last year, obviously with coronavirus. So going through and picking 10 images for this presentation, I think, I choose, I think I've chosen 13 in the end because I couldn't narrow it down, but I've chosen all images that I've done in the last year. Um, just to make it relevant. So I'll start at the very beginning. So before I see my clients in their homes, I get to know them a little bit first. So I'll always try and I'll give them a phone call or we'll communicate by email. Quite a lot of the time they're returning clients anyway, so they know the deal. Um, but I'll have a chat with them and I'll talk about my style, make sure that is definitely what they're after. Um, 
I've learned the hard way turning up to people's houses and they really want just the stand in the road, look at the camera kind of photos, which isn't what I do. So I send them a little welcome pack in the post. Um, it has a little guide in it with lots of my photos. It has a little um, style guide. So I always ask them to wear really comfortable clothes, clothes that are comfortable to move in. Um, just day to day clothes, really. I don't want them looking really smart. I've got some brilliant stories to tell you about people that have turned up in bright white, crisp ironed clothes to pet level beach which is like a mud pit that was a hilarious shoot um so yeah i give them a really good idea of what they need to expect from me so it's managing their expectations and then that means that when i walk into their home or i meet them on location they know exactly what to expect and they can relax a lot more because they know how it's going to work so um it starts with a coffee and a chat if we're in their home and i'll just get to know them a little bit um Quite a lot of my clients are young families, which is amazing because I can completely relate to them. I've got two little kids myself. I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old. Um, so newborns I can relate with and we just chat about newborn things and like kids things. And it really just puts them at ease, gets them comfortable. Um, they know that they don't need to worry about anything because I've been there as well. Um, so yeah, it's really important that bit as well because to be able to get the images that I get, I need them to be able to relax entirely during the shoot and for some people it takes longer than others and um, some people relax straight away and that's great other people it takes a, a while and a few times in the last eight years I've been doing it um, there's been maybe two families that haven't entirely relaxed and then we've reshot but that's it everyone else I've managed to get there um, so yeah I prepare them that's what I'm trying to say. So if I go to my next slide. So when I get to their home, we've had a little chat. Everyone's ready. Um, if we're shooting in their home, we'll go for a little walk around the house. They'll give me a little tour, um, give the kids some snacks while I'm doing that, just so that they, they can relax a little bit as well and know that it's not, it's not anything to worry about. So I'll look for the room with the best light. So usually this is a bedroom because they're at the back of the house. Um, I usually shoot um, my newborns and families at 10 o'clock in the morning if I'm going into their homes. Um, and I just find the room with the best light. So yeah, quite often it's the bedroom. Sometimes it's the living room by the sofa. Um, and if there isn't anywhere that works, I'll make it work. I'll find a kitchen with good light and we'll work in the kitchen. It doesn't matter because it's not about the surroundings. It's about family and getting that bright light on them. So you can see with this lovely family here, I'll tell you what I'm going to do with this family this year in a minute if coronavirus behaves itself. Um, so with this family, we literally just went on into the bedroom. I had a chat with mum. She had um, little Riley on her lap and then the girls came in and joined like, but it's all, it's got to happen naturally. Like I can't really prompt too much. I give direction. Um, so come and sit over here, have a cuddle over here. Um, with young children, it's so much easier because the kids are never worried. It's the adults. So it's more working with the parents than the children because they follow suit and they, they go with it. So um, I'll get them to sing songs with their kids. We'll have a cuddle. We'll tickle daddy, like do aeroplanes, things like that. Um, so that's how I generally start the shoot if I'm working in a home. Um, if I'm working outside, um, we'll have a little chat as we get to the place. I'll usually pick a spot, so I don't tend to travel too far. Um, if there's older children, it doesn't matter, but young children, they've got a really low attention span. They're gonna get cold and wet and tired within about 45 minutes, guaranteed. So we'll go somewhere not too far from the car. Um, my favorite place to shoot is this beach pet level, it's in Kent. Um, so we'll just go down to the tide, we'll have a little walk there and then the first thing I ask my families to do is just walk away from me and then walk towards me um, because I work in film and photo during a shoot so I'm doing both just switching between the two. This gives me a good chance to set my settings and it gives them a chance to just relax and realise there's photos happening and I'm not worried it's fine. Um, so it's a really good like um, settling in prompt to give them so I just get them to walk away um, 100 yards come back again and that's it and then it gets started so I'll get like dad to pick up his little girl spin her around in the air um, I'll get mom and the kids to go and play by the shore like it's all really natural things so it's just encouraging them to interact together naturally like they normally would um, I've got my little kit list down there so I work with the d750 I love the Nikon D750 purely because the screen pops out of the back and for film it means I can get all those angles and still see what I'm doing because the screen pops out. Um, so I love the D750. So I've got two of those. I've got four actually, but two of them stay at home. Um, so on a shoot I'll have, I take as little as possible with me as well and I tell this to the family. So I usually meet them in the car park by the car and I'll just say literally leave everything because we're not far from the car anyway. So we don't need nappy bags and things. I'll say put your wellies on, leave everything in the car, 
everyone's had a snack, had a drink, everyone's fine, everyone's had a wee. Um, and then we head out with as little as possible. And that includes me. So I take one camera, one lens. I've got another backup in the car in case I drop it in the sea, which actually has happened before. Devastating. Thank God for insurance. Um, so yeah, I shoot with a 24 to 75 at the moment. This changes all the time. So I did have a 35 Sigma Art, which I was in love with. I had that for a few years. And then I whacked it against a gate post and broke it. And now I swapped it for the 24 to 75. And I love the 24 to 75. I've also got a 50 on my backup camera. I shot with the 50 for the first four years on my professional photography. Loved it, absolutely loved it. Weddings, families, fine art, did everything with it. It's such an all round lens. Um, but I've gra gradually moved towards the wider primes. I love primes. The 24 to 75 is my first zoom lens. Um, but yeah, I really love it. I really, really, really love it. It's the Nikon one. Um, so yeah, I've worked with all different lenses, but mainly wide ones. It was primes, but now the 24 to 75 has got me absolutely sold. So I love that one because it's versatile and I don't need to move so much. But yeah, obviously family photography involves a lot of moving around. Um, so that's that one. Let's move on. So when I'm shooting, I want to create memories. So they've got to associate their shoot with a memory. So I create moments that they would do naturally, just like this one was perfect, this little boy. Um, this was his first ever bath and you can see the fear in the parent's face, but you know what, I absolutely love that. So it's about capturing real emotions, like emotive images. You want to feel something when you look at the photos. So this photo, you can see it in their faces, how terrified they are of giving their first ever baby a bath. Um, but I talked them through it. I was like, make the water this temperature, do this, do this, you'll be fine. Set them up right by the window and just let the magic happen and capture it. Um, obviously, a big part of my work is being able to shoot in absolutely any scenario, finding the light and working with the light, having professional kit that can deal with really low light situations. So their bedroom was the brightest room in the house and it was dark. Like you can see the shadows on this side of us, um, but it was dark, but we worked with it and the image is just stunning, like really beautiful and really emotive and just such precious memories. Like you cannot ever get this back again, their first bath. So I was really happy to be able to get this. It was fantastic. Um, just like life, capturing life. That's what it's all about. I love it. Um, having kids has made me realize this so much because they're little for such a short time. So I'd say probably 90% of my work is um, young families. I've dealt with a few teenage shoots in the last few months and it's been really hard work, really, really hard work because it's harder to get them to relax and engage. Um, and I can't work with them the same as I do with younger children. So I do struggle with teenagers, but we do get there. We did um, some TikTok videos at my last shoot with teenagers, <laughs> which was hilarious, but they had, um, they had just had a litter of puppies. Their Spaniel had had puppies, so they were like four weeks. So we just played with puppies. So there's always something you can get, whoever it is that you're shooting to engage with. And obviously I do couples as well. So I'll talk about the couples in a minute because I work with them slightly differently. And um, so, yeah, my shoots are all about capturing like real honest images, just like life like this. This is the Gilbert family again. And um, I'll tell you what I'm doing with them this year. So I set up a competition. I set it up in 2019 before COVID rose its ugly head, looking for a family that I could document for a whole year just unposed, completely documentary, because my work is a slight mix of lifestyle and documentary. Um, so to be able to give me the creative freedom of documentary photography, I was looking for a family that I could just go and sit in their house for an hour, every month for a year. So that's what I'm doing this year. Um, and just, yeah, just capturing them as they are, because during a shoot, I mix the two together. So I'll have some slightly set up, not set up, like I'll get them to cuddle in the bed, um, go to this point just working with the light that's there just because it's in an hour as well a normal shoot um it's a real mix of both but what i really love is the documentary unposed completely just real honest life photos so this year i'm working with them um they captured my heart at their shoot this was in december before the third lockdown um so yeah they just captured my heart so i'm really excited this year when corona goes away hopefully or lockdown releases and i can just wear pp in the house whenever it's legal um just going to be going and sitting in their house every month for the whole year just capturing things that happen because then i can really let my creativity go um with whatever happens so yeah that's what the shoots are all about it's about capturing these real moments as well as the more staged ones that they'll want with them all cuddling together um, I will encourage a lot of movement. I love movement in my photos. Um, the times of day that I shoot tend to be in the morning um, and in the late afternoon, evening, when the light's a lot lower in the sky. I struggle to work with midday sun. I'll do it if I have to. 
Um, but yeah, I prefer to work at these times. So if I can, I will. Um, obviously indoors, it doesn't matter so much. I'll usually pick a morning because the kids are better around 10 o'clock before snacks and everything. And then they can have snacks at the end and go for their naps and things. Um, that's something else I always check with parents as well before their shoot. What time should kids nap time? Do they need snacks? Like, And if they want a snack break, they can have a snack break. It doesn't matter. There's no rush for the shoots. I usually do two to three shoots a week, um, just one a day. So there's no time limit. Um, and the shoots, to be honest, are my time off because I've got two little children and when I'm at home, I'm mum. So being able to go out and shoot is my time off. So I take as long as we need. Um, but yeah, in the shoots, I encourage movement. So it's all kind of prompts like walk away, walk towards me and um, go spin your daughters round over there. Give them a cuddle, do aeroplanes and um, run towards the camera. One of my favourite ones, I think it's in the next slide. No. I might take that one out. I really did struggle to pick just 10 images for this. Um, but one of my favorite ones is I'll get, if the kids are a little bit nervous, I'll get them to come and help me take photos. So I'll literally just bend down with them, put their screen on live view um, and let them take some photos of their parents. And then I'll say, go and run and grab daddy or run and run round and round and round mom and dad while they have a cuddle in the middle. Just things like that, just to get the kids excited and playing and just interacting normally, which is what we really want. Um, connection. So obviously quite a lot of my work is wedding clients and I do engagement shoots for them. So just like a couple, it's exactly the same as my other work, just, um, just with couples. And obviously working with children is pretty easy for me. I find it really easy to engage with them. Um, but when it comes to adults, it's not always so easy. So actually this is this couple's second shoot. And if you saw their first shoot, it is such a contrast. Um, we did them a engagement shoot and they asked to bring their boys. This is before this one. And it was, I could just tell she wasn't relaxed. She had a tear up tight. She had tight jeans on, tight top, looked really pristine. Um, it was really hard work. The boys were brilliant. We got amazing photos of the boys and their dad because they relaxed, was in the woods. It was great, but she did not relax at all. And I sent her her gallery and I was like, what do you think? What do you think? And um, she was like, I love them of the kids, but it's not it's not what I wanted for us. Like she felt really awkward and you could see she was awkward. So what I said was, leave your boys at home, meet me at sunset, we're gonna go to the beach, bring a bottle of champagne. And that's what we did. We went to the beach, they had a bottle of champagne, they relaxed, they'd already worked with me once before by that point. So then they completely let loose, they relaxed and we got images like this and this is what it's all about. So I learned from that shoot and I do not let kids come to engagement shoots anymore because it's all about the parents and them getting married. Um, unless it's a baby or an exception like that. But I tried to get it the couple and not the family. But yeah, I loved it. This was just, it was my best engagement shoot. This was last year in the summer and yeah, just amazing. They proper let go. And um, I'll always start mild <laughs> with my prompts. <laughs> I say mild, like come over here, have a cuddle. I don't get them in the water until the very end. Um, but by the end, if I'm working at the beach, even in winter, everyone's in the water, splashing around, having fun. They went waist deep, they were, amazing if you go on my website um you can see their gallery i think they're in the wedding section they've got a film as well but just amazing just magic loved it absolutely loved it and it's all about looking for the connection like when i'm culling a gallery my final galleries if i go to the next slide it tells you about it in a minute um when i'm culling a gallery i'll take out any images that don't have a connection so by connection i mean a connection between the people in the image or the people in the image and me behind the camera. So there's got to be a connection in the photo for me to keep it. That's really important to me. Um, and yeah, the images have got to tell a story. Like this was in the first lockdown. This was when my sister and her other half came to visit the kids through the window. Um, just moments like this, like they've got to tell a story. You can see my husband struggling there because my son is standing on his arm. Um, but yeah, they've got to tell a story. So yeah, like I said, when you look at my images, you've got to feel something so I want they're very emotive like the, if there's a connection in the photo you can feel the connection um this was a what should you call it my brain's just gone to mush um this was a God, what's the word empowerment that's the word I'm looking for I recently started empowerment shoots for women um I started this just before lockdown three I was gutted absolutely gutted this was in November. This woman is incredible. So 
So I went down to the woods where I usually shoot my family photos. Um, if it's not pet level, it's the woods. Um, and the streams were overflowing, like they were gushing because there'd been so much water and it was powerful. And I'd recently done this lady's branding shoot and she has like these really powerful eyes. And it just came to me. I was like, I need to put her in this water. And thankfully she's a big advocate for cold water therapy and swimming because she's a life coach. So I was like, would you come and get in this pond with me? And she did. And this is exactly the image that I was going for. Really dark, really like just really powerful. And that's what I want with my images. They've got to tell a story and they've got to make you feel something. So I love that one. Really love that one. And um, so, yeah, like I said, when I do family shoots, um, any shoots, really, I'm working in a small area. So for this lovely family, we were working in their little tiny one bed flat. Um, we did a couple of photos downstairs. You'll see the first ones at the end. I've got one of their other ones. I love this shoot. This was probably one of my favorites in 2020. Um, but then we went up and worked in their tiny, tiny nursery. Um, and I have to use angles a lot to be able to create a big gallery from a small space. So it's all about angles, all about getting down low, up high. Shooting from the child's perspective is really important. Um, just, yeah, loads of angles really making it work, but I love this photo so much. Um, it's kind of taken from like, you know, Natasha Ince's um, galleries where she shoots from above and they're all like sleepy and curled into each other. Um, so this is kind of inspired from that, but in my style. So I'm often looking at other photographers work and picking up on things that they do and like, oh, I could do that, but like this and like this, but like this. Um, so this was really inspired by her. Um, photos so I tried it out and it was just brilliant I love it there's so much connection and love in this photo and you can really feel it and the light thank god in that nursery was fantastic so that's really good um, and you can see with colors as well um, colors play such a big part in the final gallery so I'll always talk to my clients before they come for their shoot and I'm like what kind of colors do you like what kind of colors have you got in your house because if I want to sell them wall arts at the end which is a big part of what I do as well I want the images to be able to match their interior and their style so I'll talk about colors they like like minimalist um more like dark and retro-y like what do they like um this couple is very minimalist very white so I was like wear white we'll shoot in a bright area and um, the initial plan actually for their shoot was to go to a field a wheat field at the road from them but we got about halfway there and it started tipping it down with rain so they were actually soaked so was I um, but we went in, dried off, and we shot in the nursery, which was brilliant, actually. It worked really well. So I was really glad we did that. Um, I'm going back when COVID disappears to shoot little Noah when he's a bit older in the wheat field. We'll get there eventually. Um, but yeah, it's very improvised, like we'll work wherever we can work. Weather dependent, we'll go wherever we can go. I shoot in the rain quite a lot as well. Doesn't matter, as long as it's not tiny children like little Noah, um, and it's not downpour, torrential. Um, then I'll go for it anyway. So yeah, it's all about angles and just working with the space, working with the light. Um, yeah. Um, so working with light, this is the best story ever. This was an engagement shoot and I turned up to the house and I was like, oh, we'll walk to the cliffs. It's, this is in Hastings. I was like, oh, we'll walk to the cliffs. It's about a five, 10 minute walk. Got to the house, they weren't ready. That's fine. I got there about five o'clock. Sunset was gonna be about half six seven o'clock so we had time I was like no 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 it's fine take your time I had a cup of tea chilled out with the kids um which was nice and then her mum finally got there baby sister came and we went for the walk to the spot they were terrified they were so nervous so I was like pop into the shop get yourself a bottle of wine and a couple of glasses we're going to go for a little relaxed walk it's going to be fine it's going to be great you're going to love it and they trusted me they listened to me we went and did that but by the time we got to the cliffs because it was a lot longer than the five ten minute walk that they'd said I wish we'd driven in the end but actually no I don't because we got these by the time we got to the cliffs and walked to the area that we needed it was about five minutes before the sunset so we worked fast in that five minutes luckily they were relaxed by the time we got there because we'd had the whole probably about 45 minute walk to relax and get into it um so we did a couple on the way but by the time we got to the place where we wanted to shoot with the right light it was nearly sunset which is actually an amazing light but i would have liked a little bit more daylight to work with but it's fine especially for film but it, no it worked it was fine and so within five ten minutes it was dark so i said let's head into town because hastings being hastings there's a lot of light so we captured i didn't have any lighting with me either because i work with available natural light i wasn't expecting it to be a dark shoot otherwise i would have brought my um speed lights and things had nothing so 
we went with it and we worked with it and I just worked with the available light. The ISO was as high as it could go, it was like 5,000. Um, but we worked with it and it was beautiful, it was magical. So each shoot that I have, it tells a story and there's always a story involved, um, which is what makes it so nice for the clients because they look at their photos and they feel happy and they remember the memory, which is really important. And I'm in touch with these people all the time, they're lovely. And they're always talking about their photos that they had. Um, Unfortunately, they've had to postpone their wedding till 2022, like most of my couples this year. Um, 2022 is going to be bonkers. I thought 21 was going to be bonkers because all of 2020 have moved over. But now both years are moving over to 22. So it's going to be, it's going to be busy. But it's, yeah, it's brilliant. Um, so like I was talking about a little bit earlier, the final gallery is large. It's huge, which is why I switched to the more like documentary lifestyle kind of style of editing as well. Because when I was trying to edit my images, it was the same style, but I was trying to edit them in the fine art style and it wasn't working because it was taking me literally days and days and days. And I was rushing to edit the galleries in my style whilst keeping to my shooting style, if that makes sense. So it was really difficult. So now that I've got a really basic edit, it's all about, I've learned a lot more since then as well. So it's all about getting it right in camera and shooting with the available light that's there. Um, this was really hard to get right and I didn't get it entirely right because you can still see highlights are blown out and things. Um, but this was with midday sun coming through the window, bright, really, really bright. You know, those big blocks of light that come through. But I had the ISO as low as it would go, put the f-stop right up high, just to balance it all out. Um, shutter speed was really fast, obviously, and um, just to get the shot because I wanted it and it's brilliant and it worked really well. It's really great. So yeah, the final galleries are really large. They're like 100 images, sometimes more than that. But it's because it's telling a story of that time together. Like there's not a moment that I want to leave out and very rarely is an image out of focus or not exposed properly or something like that. Um, most of the images are keepers. The only thing that I'll get rid of if the image doesn't have a connection, it doesn't stay. Um, so if it doesn't make me feel something, or there's no connection or anything, then the image goes. But apart from that, they stay. So there's no real limit on my gallery size. And if we shoot for longer, sometimes I've shot for up to three hours with families just because we got carried away. Then the galleries are enormous, but there's no real limit. And obviously they've got the film as well. So yeah, it just makes it all so exciting. It's all documenting that time in their lives. And I think it's so important. And I wish everyone would do it at least once while the kids are young, because yeah, it's something you want to look back on. Um, so like I say, I get lots of my, um, my images are right in camera most of the time, which makes my edit, I've got my own like overlay if you like, but it's just something, um, just really basic overlay, working with the colors a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, it makes it really quick to edit, which is nice because I'm not spending hours and hours editing, which means I can shoot a bit more and spend a bit more time with my family rather than sitting at the computer. Um, and I love colour in my images, so I always ask clients to pick a colour and like pop a colour, pop a couple of colours in there um, so that they pop out. But yeah, that's what my images are all about. They're colourful, they're emotive, they're bright and there's lots of depth in them. So this is that um, the lovely couple that I had where that's lying on the floor. This is where we started when we got in from the rain. You can see how frizzy her hair is because we went outside, but you know what? it looked great. And there's such a memory involved with the shoot that we loved it. So you can see the images, I always say to them, like this is why I've titled my presentation just as you are, because I don't want them to dress up. I don't want them to tidy up. It's all about the carnage and the life that goes with having a newborn or like the mess that comes with having toddlers. Like that's all part of the story, um, which is what my images are all about in my film. It's all about telling their story. So I do not let them clear up. I don't let them tidy up. Um, especially mums, that's one of their first questions they ask. They're like, oh, but my house is really messy. I don't think you can shoot here. But do you know what? It all adds texture, it adds layers and it adds detail. The focus isn't on the environment, it's on the couple and the emotions and the connection between them. So this is the perfect example because their downstairs was such a newborn scene. I loved it. I was like, we have to do something here because they wanted to go out to their nursery, which was obviously perfect and beautiful and tidy and clean. But I was like, no, 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 we've got to do some here because this is this is it, this is absolutely it for my documentary stuff, which is where my documentary and lifestyle kind of clashes sometimes because obviously clients love the lifestyle images, which are a bit more, a bit more staged. They're not staged at all, really. I just, um, I prompt them a lot more and it's in a controlled and like setting, whereas the documentary is just real raw, honest images like this one. So I love it. Um, so Jay, I think I'm at the end. Has anyone got any questions? Oh, we've got questions for sure. So there's no fear of that. Then. <laughs> okay. I probably should have asked you. To, I know I said 10 images, 
you, you seem to be on a bit of like super speed there, but it was really, good, really interesting. But actually, there's some questions here that I wish I'd thought of, actually, um, which are really good. Um, so I'll, I'll work through them. They're not in any particular order, Hannah Love. So we'll we'll get through there. Um, and I said, as I said to you earlier, I've got some that came in in advance as well for you. Um, just going back that you were saying, obviously, you, you, you touched on the kit and your backup cameras. Uh, just to clarify, yeah. you mentioned that you've gone to a 24 to 75. Somebody, was it on a Nikon? Because somebody felt, it, did you mean the 24 to 70? Because they didn't think there was a yeah. 24, yeah, 24, 70. That's what I yeah, thought, yeah. but I was, then I thought well, it might have been. To be honest, compared to everything else, I'm so untechnical with these things. I learn as I go. <laughs> no, it's fine. And then, then I thought that it might have been, you know, some uh, third-party lenses, but I'm Canon, so I'm not familiar with Nikon. So. No, 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 it's a Nikon 24 to 70. Excellent. Um, so this was a this was my my first um, thought was a really good question because uh, you touched on obviously the fact that you know you, you're a filmmaker as well and you do a bit of both in your sessions and I never thought yeah. to ask this because it's a good question. Are you constantly shooting video and taking the images from the video because of the quality now, or are you doing them separately? Separately. So I literally just switch between photo, film, photo, film. It depends on the moment. So I always prioritise the photo because that's an important moment to capture. Once I've got that moment from that scenario or set, I'll switch to film and just get a couple of the same because um, it works differently. Like the photos is always the priority. It's the same with weddings because I do the same there. I'll always prioritise the photos and that's what I always tell them. And then the film is kind of the moments that happen in between that don't make such a good photo, but for film, it's perfect. Brilliant. It was, it, and it was a really good question. And it was actually uh, pointed out to me, we, we, we've worked regularly with a uh, Welsh photographer called Ross Grieve, and he, he does a lot of sport and a lot of uh, pet photography. Um, and, oh, yeah. and, he's, and he's a 4K shooter. So he actually shoots the video and actually takes the, the images out of, of the video. Uh, so, you know, he's shooting 4K video and, and extracting a lot of his portraits and stills from there. So that's the sort of prompted the question came in from one of the uh, one of the viewers. So a uh, really yeah. good question. I think you kind of answered this as you were going, but I will, we'll re-ask it. Um, you said, okay. obviously, you prefer um, natural lights, you know, available light. But obviously, as yeah. you said, if you'd known, you would have taken your speed lights on and that. So it, lighting is a factor where you can pure daylight, is it, love? Sorry, say it so one pure, pure natural light as as a as a as a general rule, but obviously speed lights and yeah. lighting if you need it. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's the room's getting dark, it's towards the end of the day, I'll stick on a lamp. Anything like that, just to work with the yeah, just working with whatever's there. So it's usually natural light is obviously my absolute favourite. I can work with that. I'm really comfortable with it. Um if I have to put artificial light in there, I'll do it because I know how I just don't like it very much. I don't prefer it. I prefer natural. <laughs> no, absolutely brilliant. Um, you've just answered this next question because I've kind of just asked if you how do you manage the video and the photos so you've 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 just done that one um, do you have a particular choice of, of uh, speed light or is it I've got the oh god what's it called it's like Yongu or something oh, Yongu, same as us. yeah I think that's how you pronounce yeah. it yeah I just love them They're, and I break so many at weddings because I'm really incapable of fixing them to my camera properly and I get excited and throw them off so I get through a lot of it be able to have a cheaper speed light that's really good is great no the, yeah i i don't I, i'll be honest we pronounce it as yongu we were corrected actually i think it's quite but um no when we discovered those um you know we were shooting the cannons and we just thought the money is fantastic um you know for the for the yongu and yeah we're, we're in love with them so i think we've got six of them here anyway um uh, brilliant okay uh so what uh oh okay so i've got um so I've got things that are matching up from my pre, my the, the questions I got prepared earlier to the ones that are coming through the chat panel. Oh, yes. let's, let's work through a few of those. Um, there was a, um, this came on actually earlier uh, in in the conversation. You know, the documentary style and why I kind of asked it at the beginning is that we're we're very familiar with it. You know, in the wedding industry, and obviously you touched on that. Um, you know, where you kind of began. Um, it was really interesting yeah. for me because um, I saw it from your point of view, it's, it seemed like you were doing more of the family and the lifestyle. And of course you're doing the weddings as well. Are you finding yeah. um, that more people are searching out this type of photography for their portraiture? Yes. Yeah, yeah. studio seems to be dropping. Like people aren't looking for that white, um, high key kind of image anymore. They're yeah. looking for the emotive 
more relaxed especially with young kids because that's um especially for me as a mum going to a studio and having to make my children behave is traumatizing like I don't think it would happen they'd break everything so the thought of going to a beach and just letting them play is so much more appealing and I think people are realizing that that's actually a thing they don't have to go for the high key studio stand in the line family photos because we had them as kids and I hated every single second and you can see it in me and my brother and sister's faces like we hated it um so I think people are realizing that this style of documentary photography is a thing and they can actually do it so they love it and they're looking for it Brilliant. and uh, saying that one of the questions that came in earlier because we promoted it as you as a filmmaker what's the balance so you've kind of answered that already um, I did hear yeah. you touch on so one of the things that I was interested in uh, but it's come up in the question panel as well um, is you know what what are they buying because you've, you've you've already said and correct me if I'm wrong you know when you say final gallery of you know 100 images is that what you give into the client yeah yeah so I, I have three packages um, the first package includes 10 images and the second ones, I've recently made these, but I only really sell all of them. Like it's 50 pounds difference between having 10 and having them all. The 10 one is there just to have it there. But I I shoot to sell them all. Like I'm not taking on clients that are gonna spend a couple of hundred. I take on clients that are gonna spend five, 600. Right, brilliant. So when you, so, uh, so very much, Correct me if I'm wrong. So when you say you're um, selling packages, is that have you found that, that you've just sort of taken that prompt from, say, wedding packages? Yeah. yeah, otherwise it's just a waste of my time. If they're not prepared to go and take on the whole experience, which includes the whole gallery, like these aren't galleries where you can pick out five or ten. It's not that kind of shoot. Yeah. It's not that kind of photo. So I pre-plan them like... Um, they know what to expect. So if I just tell you my packages now, so the short story is 500 and that's um, that's the online viewing gallery. They've got 10 images and then they get the fine art prints. And then the next one up is the novel, which is 550. And they've got um, the whole gallery um, or 20 images. And then the next one's 600. So they've got them all in the film and everything. So it's kind of tailored to, they're having them all and they're never gonna go for, they never really go for less because there's no point. Like if yeah. they're going for my shit, they're going for everything. So, and I don't know. so based on what you've just shared with us there, because that was a question that um, has come through as well with regards to products. So are you upselling then? Because you mentioned wall art. Yeah, so I have, um, I use shoot proof for my galleries and then I have the shop set up through that. Before lockdown, I had a studio and I had my wall arts everywhere and it was all in-person sales. But because of lockdown in the beginning of the year, I shut my studio down. It's all digital. So people know that I do them, but it's not such a big thing anymore. But what I plan to do is have my own printer and I can just print out fine art shoots because I love them, like on the proper nice papers and things. And um, But yeah, selling wall art used to be a big thing that I did. But since lockdown and coronavirus and like in-person things, I've dropped it for now. I might pick it up again. It depends what happens with the climate and everything. Um, but yeah, I do upsell. I sell a lot of albums and prints and things. That Because that, that was for me, that was one of the questions that was going through my head was that um, I can absolutely see images of yours that, yeah, I'd love to see big on a, you know, on a, on a, on a, in a, in a frame on the wall. And I, you absolutely capture that. I also, for me, I'm kind of old fashioned and I don't, I, well, we're, we're, we're not old fashioned. I think it's, it's definitely had a, a rebirth, you know, the album, the photo book, the story yeah, book, definitely. I think, you know. So. This is what these are all about as well. This tells a story, the whole gallery. Yeah. So gallery albums is something I push. I love my albums. Yeah. I've got one from every year of my kids being little and I've got clients that come back every year and have an album made every year. Um, but, but it works so much better because you can put them all in there like, and it's just, yes, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. It's yeah. not the kind of image that you put big on a wall. My fine art stuff used to be, I used to sell giant acrylic orbs and things like that, but it's not my thing. Um, I'd rather, I, what I do sell a lot of, or I did before lockdown was, um, you know, like the wall collections, like birch blocks in collections, yeah. so like yeah. nine images together. That used to work really well. And I've got those all over my house. Yeah, but, um, I see yeah albums yeah. and like multiple. No, kind of story, right? we, we've been okay. huge. We've never, we've always preached, even in our business mentoring, we've always preached the print, you know, the power of the print, the, whether it is, yeah. you know, was, yeah, the print. I mean, I suppose been, the print box that can work well for you as well, does it, Hannah, or a possibility? Yeah, so what, yeah, what I do is I used to do, I used to have um print boxes and things, but it meant 
spending hours and hours getting them to choose. So what I do now is I have five fine art prints included with each of the collections. So they pick the absolute favorite five and I have them printed on really nice paper and present them really beautifully. Um, but I used to, what I used to do a few years ago, maybe three years ago now, I used to print all the photos from the final gallery, which by the time it was getting to like 100 and 120 photos, that was a lot of printing and really expensive. So I stopped doing that. I just pick out their absolute five favorite motive. I say, when I say pick your photo for them, I say pick the ones that instantly make you like take a breath, like the ones that really capture you. And yeah. um, so whichever they are, it doesn't matter if it's dad's not with this one or dad's not got this son with him or it's literally the ones that make them feel something. They're the ones that they have printed. So we'll just clarify because it's, it's, I think I've caused a little bit of confusion in the question. So when you talk about your packages, they are they are getting a, a digital download of them all then and they're picking their print package included is that right yeah, that's right so the first one they can pick 10 images digital images and they get five prints um the next one they can pick 20 digital images and they've got five 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 fine art prints and then the top collection which is only 100 more than the first one they get all the gallery so right. that's the one they always go for no one really goes for the other two but it's there to let them know that they don't have to spend all of that they can spend that but they don't because they see the gallery and then they go for all of them so they've all got prints and digital ones Perfect, brilliant. Uh, right, let me just go. I'm, I'm jumping between my printouts and the and the chat panel, which is great. Um, oh, let's go back to the chat panel. So, um, you mentioned obviously at the beginning. Well, you t you told us how you got into this. So when um, I think you kind of might have answered this already. So when you were getting started, um, did you, were you doing any kind of model shout outs or well, you mentioned obviously you looked for a family to do this year long project with. Um, Loads, yeah. You know, is that kind of a way forward for people looking to get into it? You know, practice with the people um, that you know, friends and family, or what did you do? Definitely practice with the people that you know, because people take the piss. Um, <laughs> not in a horrible way, but like if people see model calls, it doesn't matter what you're looking for. They're looking for something else and they want you to shoot for free, if that makes sense. Yeah. So what I'll always do is I'll find a family that I know has the kind of look that I'm going for, or like they'll work with me and I'll just talk to them about it. If I want to promote something and like get more reach on my posts or something, I'll do a big shout out and then pick the ones that I know will really work. Like for the um, the day in the life that I did, the shoot where I'm gonna shoot the Gilberts all, all year this year, um, it had to be a certain type of family and I had to connect with them and it had to work. So there were like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of inquiries, but most of them didn't get the gist of the documentary thing. There's just more about having a free shoot every month. Right. Yeah, and I can get the feeling that just, you've got to pick the model calls that work for you. You can't be working your style to them. It's got to be they've got to be 100 percent dedicated to what you're trying to achieve. So it's difficult model calls. And it also, yeah, I think yeah. people then just end up looking out for model calls that you're going to do rather than booking you for a shoot. Well, it was interesting. One of the questions that I wrote down for you and it was before you got on to this possible year long project was you know, you talked about a day in the life or an hour, even just as simple as an hour with a couple. And my question yeah. was going to be, have you ever done anything longer than a day? And so you've answered that or you what are you planning to, which is which is uh, yeah. which is uh, phenomenal. And is that for you? And obviously they'll do it. They'll get it. But is that a bit more it's of a personal me. project for you? Yeah, brilliant. Definitely for me. Yeah. What I was really looking for, I really wanted someone that had like terminal cancer or something, because a lot of my images are really happy family images, but I want to document life, like, and yeah. I feel like death and end stage and like real emotive, really powerful images. That's what I really want to do. So, yeah, just, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm looking for. So this is all personal stuff, like the one where I put the lady, oh, she was naked in that lake as well um, in November. The one that I got to get into the water, just things like that just come to my head and I like to follow them through. So, yeah, that's something I want to focus on in future as well is working less for people and working more for me. I'm going to come back to that water shoot in a minute because I've got something I want to ask <laughs> you about that. Um, I'm not familiar, as I said, I'm Canon and I'm not Nikon, so I'm not familiar. Is your is it is it mirrorless, your system, Lev? No. No. Um, have you thought about that? Do you think that might impact you going forward with kit? Would that make your life easier in any way, do you think, or not? I had a really good one-to-one -one with Richard Wakefield that does the film, and um, he's got mirrorless, and it's just small and dainty, and I think I'm so used to, like, big butch cameras that I'd struggle because I've got um, I've got bigger hands. I don't know. I think it'd be too delicate, and I don't know. It just looks too technical. It's, it's I think I know what I know. I'd stick with it. It'd be a big jump. With us, we've been Canon for ages. We do have uh, some uh, the Fuji X Pro system here, or the, the very first one, 
And I remember mm. Mark saying, yeah, go give that a go. And it was so alien to my Canon that it wasn't mm. that I didn't like the camera. I just didn't get my head around using it. Um, I don't no, know. It took you to get used to it, I think. And I know what I know and I like what I know. So at the moment, I'm not going to change it because it's not broken, if that makes sense. I'm Maybe not. if I dropped all my cameras in the sea, I'd start fresh. But i tell you what was interesting for me, and, 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 and uh, I don't know if you know, uh, do you know Kevin Mullins or have you heard of Kevin Mullins? No. Uh, so he, he teaches for us a documentary wedding photographer. That's what he's really known for in his black and white documentary style. And I've known Kevin for years, even though he's a Welshman. He's definitely living in England now. We won't go there. I know you're in England, but you know why. But uh, he always comes back for the rugby, and we always try and catch up. Albeit we haven't had to be able to do that for a while. Um, but yeah. he was uh, moved f away from Nikon to uh, Fuji. Um, you know the mirrorless systems. Um, but yeah. he and he's a he, you know he shoots weddings all well was shooting weddings all over the world. Uh, but he said one of the main reasons for him switching to the mirrorless as a as a wedding documentary photographer is that you know he had one camera in his hand, he had one on his belt strap, you know the, I don't know what they're called, but the holster style system. Yeah, yeah they're know, heavy. Um, and obviously the mirrorless changed the weight down. But the biggest thing for him as a destination wedding photographer is he could actually get on the plane without actually having to put anything in the hold. Yeah, that's so, so true. And yeah. I think, yeah if I've got, I did have a wedding in Thailand last year in November, but obviously it cancelled because of Corona, gutted. Um, I've got one book for Cyprus this year, and I think that will be cancelled as well. But yeah, if that starts to become more of a thing like destination weddings, then I think there's definitely a lot of value to going mirrorless. Yeah. It's small and it's I, I, I remember he sent me some pictures once and he literally, um, you know, took his kit and, and his suit was in his carry-on. Is you know it, it, yeah. a casual suit, Maybe. and um, yeah, because it was just one day in in Paris it was, and then he literally flew in in the morning and flew out of the night and just literally walked on the plane. So I understood that. No, I I haven't been able to get my head around the Fuji. I picked it up the other again the other day, and it just went. Oh no, I can't be bothered. I, yeah. can still... I would love to, but it would take time, and I don't have much time at the moment. Yes. Um, um, one day. Yeah. That's an interesting question. Some of you obviously. Well, you know, you know, I'm not going to answer it for you. Some of your photos don't show your clients' faces. Do you think they have any issues with that? I think yeah, it's... definitely, but that's my style. Faceless images, I just think they're so, like, it's emotive, isn't it? You're looking at what they're doing. Um, it really works. So when I'm shooting my family, like loads of it's faceless. I think it's, yeah, if it works, it works. But yeah. it's not always the images that clients go for. But do you know what? When they're buying the whole gallery and they see them, they see how they work together as a collection and they see why... I like that photo, yeah. but it's not always the go-to, like all in a circle looking at the kind of photo. So obviously at the beginning, and you and I discussed it the other day, you know, and I listed this as, you know, lifestyle slash documentary portrait. And, I, I, mm. and again, please, I don't want to put words in your mouth, so correct me if I'm wrong, but the question was, you know, how would you sort of define the two? And I think you encapsulated it the best when you said about there are some times that you are kind of setting up a shot, and would you say that's more the lifestyle and then the documentary is the full on capture yeah definitely so for the client work they want the more lifestyle and it creates the gallery it puts it together in what i do so there is a lot of directed kind of images whereas my love and my absolute passion is the documentary unposed just life photos so it work, they work together really well but it is a good mix of the two and the clients definitely prefer the doc, the lifestyle sorry over the documentary whereas i'm all about the documentary um, brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. A good mix. Uh, somebody's asked, uh, when you say a day in the life, how long is typically your shooting day with them? An hour. Oh, it is an, it, it, oh it's an hour. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah, it, isn't, yeah. it isn't a day with them then. <laughs> I'd love to spend a day with them <laughs> one day. <laughs> no, but they're like, this is why I'm doing the day in the life project next year because that's what I want to do because that's when you get the real relaxed just normal day-to-day -day images Um, it's what I do with my family really but I want to be in them and it's yeah it's not the same because it's my kids so they mess around and they don't like having a photo taken anymore because they've had it all their life but I just want to have real images like just making breakfast like fighting with dad whatever's going on Um, whereas my client shoots it's a lot more pressured I think um, to get the images that I get. So I'll make sure that I get the ones that I need in 15 minutes, roughly, of starting to shoot. So I get everything that I need, like mum with this child, dad with this child, dad with this child, all together, mum and the kids, like those like set to make it a business for people. Those are the ones that I get in 15 minutes. Then I tend to have the rest of the shoot, just my kind of thing. 
brilliant. Well, we rattled through most of the questions. I've got one thing uh, just to just wanted I wanted to ask you. Um, oh, somebody's asked. I don't know if it is just because to do with your mentoring or your workshops that we're going to chat about in a minute, or whether they're looking maybe to shoot with you. Uh, but where were you based, yeah. Hannah? Did you say? I can't remember. I'm in Kent. In Kent. So typically, and that's a, well, that's actually prompted a good question. Are you staying local? Are you travelling? What 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 do you do? go everywhere <laughs> yeah there's no limit i just charge for fuel and if it's within if it's over if it's quite a while i just ask them to put me in a travel lodge for the night yeah of course no oh, brilliant fantastic so i want to talk about that water shoot okay oh, so yeah. obviously <laughs> did did you say then just now that the that that you were naked as well or the two of you were i wasn't naked the oh, client was, was completely right. naked. And that's what my empowerment shoots are going to be. So this is my new thing for 2021. And I was kind of t testing out with her. Um, I didn't even plan it. It just started because I saw that powerful water and saw her eyes. It yeah. sounds really weird. But in my head, I had that image and I made it. And then she found it so empowering because she's going through quite a tough time in her life with um, various things. But she found it so empowering and uplifting. And I loved it. So that's going to be my thing for 21. Emp right. um, women empowerment shoots. Men as well if they want it. But yeah, she was completely naked in that lake in November. It was freezing cold i was up to my waist um to get the shot um but it was brilliant i loved it so good well i'm going to share a different story that didn't you know work so we work with um uh, a commercial photographer called george fairburn and he um was making some film with us here in barry because we're by the coast if you didn't know uh, we were in this our shoot was in the summer um but he had done a runner he had through us run a competition to find some bands he's really famous for pho photographing bands um yeah. so he said i, I want to find a typical you know, welsh rock band you know that the, the yeah. typifies well rush what rock bands so uh fortunately i've got a background in music photography so I've, i can find yeah. bands left right and center um and he went i've got this shot that i want to do in the water um so oh, yeah they've got to be up for it and it's like uh, so anyway we found this very typical welsh full-on heavy metal band long haired uh you know drain pipe jeans you know pretty boy they were perfect for us yeah. and uh, we said to them well george has got this idea for a shot in the sea are you up for it and the tip yeah we're rock stars of course we are um so <laughs> i said to george what are we doing he said well i want to put them just like you did i want the three-piece band i want them up to their eyes so i just want to photograph their <laughs> eyes and their long hair on the surface of the water brilliant okay so we've uh, this this was a few years ago before covid obviously um we had a yeah. have two video we had two videographers at the time uh and um and, and i was out uh with him as his assistant um yeah. didn't think that i was going in the water love to be honest with you <laughs> um, and george said well i want to use my lighting so I have the Ellen Crom LEB or whatever it is, power pack, literally strapped around my chest with his oh light God. behind him. And I'm up to my waist in the summer and my legs <laughs> went blue. It was freezing. So God, if you were in the November, I can only imagine. And yeah, these, boys, these boys turned to color. They, they were, there are photographs <laughs> of them blue. They were up to their eyes. But the shot that was the best was actually the one up to their waist. So they went up to their eyes yeah. for no for them anyway. But so so my my hats off to you. Absolutely brilliant, um, Hannah. I have absolutely loved you being with us, and so of the audience. Oh, uh, for loads, me. Loads, it's exciting. loads and loads of praise coming through the chat panel. Really, really interesting. Oh, really? And, so nice. I really didn't think anyone would want to listen to me. I feel like a bit of a fraud coming on here. No, not at all. No, no, not at all. So we haven't talked about it. We should say that. You are, and you do mentoring, teaching, and online workshops exactly about this. So we never do any yeah. hard sales, but uh, I know that you people you found that people have been sort of seek seeking out you for yeah. for this. Yeah, so I'll so. tell you how this started. This was purely yeah. because of lockdown. I yeah. started doing it online because I didn't want the families to miss anything. So it was mainly set up for parents to learn to use their, because everyone's got one, haven't they? Just the DSLR stick one yeah. to the cupboard, like a frame, but it's still there. So it was all about getting them to get it out and take proper photos and just like get documenting. So that's why it started. Um, but I will do proper, like more professional ones if it's, well, it's obviously it's wanted, which oh, I didn't think it would be. No, it's, definitely. Yeah, Definitely. So as we said at the beginning, and we'll remind them again, go to Hannah's website, which is thelifenarrator.co.uk. The link's in your chat panel. And as I said, you'll all get a follow-up email from the GoToWebinar system tomorrow with that in there. And of course, you can uh, interact with Hannah on her social media as well. 
um, but definitely get in touch with Ego and find out. Uh, Hannah, I will. We can tell that even in the hour we spent together, there are a lot more stories to share. So I will absolutely have you back if you're up for it. Um, Yay, and, um, no, brilliant! I really, really enjoyed that hour with us. Want to thank you all for joining us in these times. Thank Hannah again. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to stop the recording, but there's a couple of quick reminders if you if you will indulge me because we have ramped up um, our online 